let's begin so last class we looked at this noise shaping right and the basic premise was similar to in pipeline the goal was to cancel the quantization noise so in the pipeline adc we cancel that in the digital domain using another adc so here we are doing it in the uh, analog domain so the first idea was to take the adc and then put a dac here find the quantization noise and kind of subtract this but we basically saw this process incurs one clock cycle of delay that's because whenever you sense and do some kind of feedback there will always be one clock cycle of delay so then if i look at the output here so usually the input is u the input to the quantizer is y and the output is v so in the z domain we had the input plus q times what did we have Huh? yeah i mean so here i mean quickly look at it and tell me right so uh, this is adding a quantization noise q no no let's look at it right yeah some, this is q so what will be this output q of n what is this guy q of n minus 1 so what will be the final output yeah so if i take this at transform i have 1 minus z inverse this was the high pass filter that gave us the noise shape right and at the end we also saw this can be done in a cleaner way using the delta sigma modulator where the basic thing that happens is this we have this integrator the adc and then we have the dac and remember this when we do this there is one clock cycle of delay inherently so that explicitly i'll model it like this if we do this again we'll have the same thing v of z will be <coughs> the input plus this times 1 minus z inverse right but uh, but usually what we do is from the input side we also have add a z inverse so that basically introduce a z inverse at the input side so which means you can push these two inside this so we'll have this as the final thing so although i've written it like this please note that in the feedback side there is always one clock cycle of delay so from the feedback to this point we just need to have a delay free integrator because one half I mean one clock cycle of delay is already inherently assumed from the input to here we should have a delayed integrator so uh, the terminology is this guy is called the signal transfer function this is the noise transfer function so basically stf is the output by the input when the other guy is zero ntf is the same v by q when u is zero right so let's quickly look at how the quantization noise spectrum look like so normally if i just take the quantization noise spectrum again i usually write uh, here i write 1 by 2 pi s q of par d omega if i just took the quantization noise spectrum it's going to be flat and what is this value remember that this what is the whole area from 0 to pi yeah the whole area is delta square by 12 so what is that this value delta square by 12 pi right so now the filtered quantization noise if i look at it it's the white quantization noise times this high pass filter so if i look at the pass spectral density of this guy or i'll just say like this how will it look like what will this be i have already put a scaling factor 1 by 2 pi and this what is 1 by 2 by sq of e power j omega yeah 
yeah i mean what is this i mean tell me what what will this be i mean what, what is the entire thing yeah but what is the s of 1 by 2 pi we already know the value right ha huh. delta square by 12 pi times the magnitude of what what should i come what should come here okay so my uh, i'll just write it here ntf of e power j omega is 1 minus e power minus j omega right so now let's say at low frequencies how can i approximate this as i mean i'm just taking the magnitude it's omega so if i just write the pass spectral density of the high pass shaped noise what is it approximately delta square omega square by yeah delta square by 12 pi times omega square so after filtering it's going to look like this so this is 1 by 2 pi s cube of e power j omega right so after doing this high pass shape high pass filtering the uh, total quantization noise power do you think it has increased or reduced it has increased right and how will i find it i have to basically integrate this entire thing from 0 to pi that's basically integral of this let's quickly do that right so let's say i find sigma square qf that's integral of this delta square by 12 pi or i'll push the delta square by 12 pi out it's constant so it's delta square by 12 times i'll let it like this 1 by pi integral 0 to pi this and how did uh, how did we simplify this pass using pass evals so here what is the impulse response ah the the delta minus 1 delta delta i mean remember that see the point minus it's just 1 and minus 1 right remember that if i have some x of n the fourier transform is simply yeah summation of x of n e power minus j omega n if you have it in the power series format it's trivial to find what is the impulse response right so the overall quantization noise power in general it's delta square by 12 times magnitude squared of ntf so and in this case it's twice that right so the overall quantization noise power is large but if i look at the noise power in a small bandwidth it is small so we no longer i mean we should not be doing only noise shaping we should also do what should we do we should also do over sampling that is where we restrict the signal bandwidth to a fraction of it so let's say this is zero i'll say the bandwidth is fs by 2m although the maximum bandwidth i can have is fs by 2 this m is the over sampling ratio right and so within this signal bandwidth the noise is very small but outside this guy i have a lot of noise so what do we do we have to have a low pass filter so let me this actually so at this output i'll have a digital low pass filter and then finally i can reduce the sampling rate so this way you can actually choose a large enough over sampling ratio so that even if you have say a single bit quantizer here the effective resolution can be really large right and remember that the additional bits of resolution i mean here the data is still single bit right here the data is still single bit but how are we getting the higher resolution which block is giving the sorry this digital filter is what is giving it remember this is a digital filter its impulse response has to be represented with finite bit precision and depending on how precise you are having this filter you will have good so let's i will actually show you some uh, simulation examples so what i did was i took this guy first order i mean by the way this is called the first order 
delta sigma modulator or dsm often referred to as mod 1 so i took this first order modulator and uh, simulated in matlab so i had i think over sampling ratio of 512 again single bit data i fed in a sinusoid so this is how the uh, result looks like so i don't know if it's clear so this guy is the sinusoid and the white you see it's toggling between minus 1 and 1 it is a single bit data okay so now if i zoom in you can see slightly more clearly so again this guy is the input so you can see here that when the input crosses zero you see you have maximum number of toggling's right and when the input crosses zero what can you say about the slope of the sinusoid the slope of the sinusoid is maximum when it crosses zero and that's where you have maximum toplings and when the input is sort of slowing down this guy is also slowed down right so loosely speaking this first order modulator behaves like a pulse width modulator right and i mean of course now let's look at the uh, frequency domain spectrum so i'll plot the frequency spectrum of this single bit data so that looks like this so couple of things first i want you to focus here so look at this frequency scale is it in uh, what kind of scale is it in it's in log scale so why am i plotting a log scale just because i know log i don't take log yeah, here, right? i mean why do you usually take log scale in uh, yeah but see here when order of magnitude changes by correct right so here see if you think about it i am my signal bandwidth is small or large here very small. it's very small right because i am going to have large over sampling i am interested to find what happens in that small range of signal frequencies so basically i take this log scale so that this guy is magnified right and of course in the y axis you take log similarly so next thing is uh, i see that my signal occupies three bins why is that so it's a single sinusoid i normally expect one impulse but here i have three of them when will this happen we remember we took the hand window but why are we taking i'm, I'm taking hand window here that is true but wh why am i taking the hand window why do we need window functions I mean, see, he, huh? I mean, see, here I have chosen my input properly, okay? No, no, see, ideally if the signal is not lying on a bin, we will do it. Yeah. But here I have made sure my signal lies on a bin. I have chosen some n, I think some 2 power 17 or something. And I have chosen my input frequency to be of the form, okay? So, signal definitely falls on a bin. In the class, it also not it should be coming. Like this assumption change which should have. Yeah, okay. So, what happens is see here with respect to signal, I am fine, right? Because if you recollect, when I take the discrete Fourier transform, it just assumes that we have this data of 0 to n samples. So, whatever is there in this n samples, it, it assumes that the signal is inherently periodic and we form a periodic sequence, and the spectrum of this periodic sequence is what computed. Now, if I, I by choosing this guy properly, with respect to signal, I made sure it's completely fine. Okay, but along with signal at the output, what do I have? I mean, in the output sequence, ADC output, I also have quantization noise. Now, if you take a normal ADC like a SAR or pipeline, if my input signal is periodic, what can you say about the quantization noise? Periodic because for each input sample, I am getting a corresponding quantization noise. So, if the same input repeats here, I will have the same quantization noise, right? But if you look at what happens in uh, delta sigma modulator, the actual input I feed is here, but the signal that is getting quantized is this guy, right? So, I can have the signal to be properly periodic, but it does not necessarily mean that the signal that is getting quantized is periodic okay so in a delta sigma modulator you cannot enforce that if, if your signal is periodic the quantization noise will also be periodic 
in a first order modulator it is okay but if you go for higher order modulators which we will see today this will be a huge problem so what will happen is this ideally I expect my quantization noise to also to be periodic but in this case let's say it will do something like this from 0 to n minus 1 n samples and then when we try to repeat it we will have a huge jump here so this huge jump can, jump can be thought of as adding an impulse error and if you have an impulse as an error signal what will happen in the frequency domain time domain is impulse in the frequency domain how will it look like it will be flat so you will basically end up with some flat noise levels you will not be able to see this noise shaping so that is why in uh, noise shaping ADCs even though you make sure your signal falls on a bin properly you have to take hand window okay. and the third thing to notice so okay here the NTF is 1 minus Z inverse so at low frequencies how does it go as for small values of omega it goes as omega right and I mean so basically here uh, this power spectral density so it all magnitude square this so I am plotting in log log scale what is the slope of this guy alright I mean you have taken body plots right it goes as omega square in power I am going to take 10 log so if I take 10 log of this guy what will I get yeah 20 log of omega so what is the slope <laughs> it is a log log thing right if I increase ok let me write it here this is 20 log omega yeah if I increase omega 10 times what happens to the magnitude so if I increase the frequency 10 times goes by 20 dB so the slope is 20 dB per decade right and you can also see root C right so here let us say the values maybe I will check here here it is minus 80 dB 10 power minus 3 somewhere here it is minus 60 dB so this noise shaping is happening okay. and I have chosen my oversampling ratio to be I think 512 if the sampling rate is fs what is the signal bandwidth fs by 2 is the Nyquist rate 1 mth of it is the actual thing so it is 2 times 512 okay. so here I plotted the normalized frequency that is uh, this is 1 this means this 1 times fs by 2 Okay, so my signal bandwidth is lying somewhere here. Okay, this is going to be FS by 1024. So to find the signal to noise ratio, I'll basically find how much uh, how much is the noise that is present only in this bandwidth. I'll assume that I have the digital filter that is going to knock off this guy completely, right? And if I find it, I get the quantization noise. Sorry, SQNR to be around. 80 dB. So, what is the uh, ENOP then? 80 by 6 loosely, let's just rough numbers, right? What is the range? Huh? Yeah, around 13 to 14, right? That's all. It is less than 14. Cool. So, now uh, this is basically the spectrum of the single bit data. And of course, from the single bit stream, it is not clear how this is even following the sinusoid, right? I mean, if I give the single bit data, I cannot say that this is actually a sinusoid. And that is all happening because we have just done the noise shaping here. We still have a lot of noise lying outside my signal bandwidth. Only after I remove them out, this will be better and let's see what happens. So, this data, I am going to filter it and let's see what happens after filtering. So this is what I get. Okay. So here I see. No, no, no. This is the spectrum just after the ADC. That is without doing any filtering. See, if I do filtering, this portion will not be there, isn't it? This is the single bit data. I have taken the spectrum directly. So after I pass it through a filter. So this is the output I get. So the uh, yellow is the input and the blue guy is the filtered output now you can clearly see nicely tracks it right and of course you see that the output comes after a small delay why does it make sense no right I mean that's not yeah but uh, that is not the actual thing here you see a lot of delay right I mean my sampling rate is much smaller 
and basically i'm taking the single bit data pass it through a filter this is the square wave i mean whatever we saw and this is the final stuff why why this is having a small delay i mean the filter needs some time right the filter will have its own delay that's why it's coming okay. and remember in the last class as i mentioned we have to choose enough bit precision for the filter okay so here i have assumed infinite precision for the filter simple response and i have got a nice thing so let us see what will happen if i keep uh, using finite number of bits right and uh, to remind you the eno by got was around 13 to 14 bits right so initially i tried to use 14 bits of precision right and so what i am doing is i am taking this uh, single bit data that is this noise spectrum giving to the filter so if i look at the spectrum at the output of the filter i expect that this guy should be completely removed right so let's see what happens so i do this so here i am showing two graphs so uh, the yellow one is when i use full precision and as you see if i use the yellow one this is nicely suppressed less than you know 100 db but if i just use 14 bits of precision you see that it's actually quite tight it is not able to filter it properly and in this case i think i got only around 60 db of s kind of whereas i should have gotten around 80 db okay so and then only when i had to when only when i use around 18 bits of precision we get this white thing and then it matches the ideal thing. so basically even though my enob is around 14 bits at the output i should have i am having around 18 bits but this 18 bits of data has an effective resolution of only 14 bits i mean you can also look at it uh, this way see after this low pass filtering remember that we actually do down sampling to bring the sampling rate down right and usually this low pass filter we assume that it's going to remove everything beyond my signal bandwidth let's say this is my signal bandwidth i kind of assume that everything beyond this will completely get knocked off so when i reduce the sampling rate it is all fine because there is no content beyond this frequency there is no content beyond this frequency i'm okay but let us say the filter is not good i'll i'll have some residual content here now if i down sample what will happen i am reducing the sampling rate but still i have some i have significant portion of noise present outside my maximum frequency so this is basically like aliasing right so this will all fold back okay and that's essentially what happens so this is after down sampling right so the one you see in yellow is again with full precision and if i have only 14 bits for my filter you can see that the out of band noise is not completely getting filtered so that sort of results in a higher noise and only if i use 18 bits it kind of matches cool so to summarize i have this first order modulator mod 1 so where this is the simplest block diagram <coughs> this see this guy i not show the dac it's all assumed it is there okay so here again to remind you the ntf what is the ntf here 1 minus inverse okay and uh, remember that the at low frequencies this goes as i mean i'll just write 1 by 2 by the filtered noise how its far spectral density is looking like it's delta square by 12 pi at low frequencies it just goes as omega square and the total noise is basically delta square by 12 times magnitude squared of the impulse response okay so now a couple of other things i want you to uh, focus here so let us say i take summation of all the impulse response what will this be Y zero. 
yeah i mean that is correct so if i look at the impulse response it is basically 1 and minus 1 we sum it up it's 0 that is correct but why does it make sense in the long term all the uh, not really if i take the sum of impulse response what does it correspond to in frequency domain So again, let's write it like this. So let us say I have h of e power j omega. What is this in terms of the impulse response? Uh -huh. H of n into omega n, right? So now look at this and tell me what happens. If I just sum up all the impulse response, I mean from this how can I get this guy? I have to put omega equal to 0. So this basically is the impulse response, sorry the NTF evaluated at DC and what is that? That is 0 because that is what you want, you want high pass filter so it makes sense right, I mean this is basically same as NTF at what at what value of Z, omega equal to 0 correspond to Z equal to 1. So remember Z is simply speaking in our course it is C power G omega that is all. Okay. So, if someone gives you an NTF saying that this is a high pass shaped NTF, the sanity check you do is this, right? And the second thing is this. So, here let us say I gave you this system as such. So, here I have two inputs u and q. If I were to find the impulse response of the NTF, what will I do? Sorry? Where will I apply the impulse? I have two inputs. I mean, I am trying to find the impulse response from this guy to this guy, right? So, where will I apply the impulse? Q must be an impulse, right? What will I do to the other input? I will basically ground this guy and apply an impulse here and see what comes at the output. So, let us quickly check. I am applying an impulse at n equal to 0 others are all okay and what will be the first sample of the impulse response i mean you already know the impulse response what is the first sample one now why does it make sense it ought to be there i am applying an impulse at n equal to 0 on this right See the output here is basically this impulse, this signal plus this guy, right? That's all. So if I am interested in the first sample, I should basically see what is the first sample here and the first sample here, right? Now remember that this guy, yeah. For, remember that this guy to respond, we need to feed something. So the impulse will go here, and only after one clock cycle, it is going to respond. So the first sample here. What can you say about the first sample here? That will definitely be 0, right? So, the first sample you get here will directly be the impulse you launched. That is simply because we have this one clock cycle of delay because we have causal systems, right? So, this is definitely one irrespective of whatever you have. Any complicated impulse response you can have because of the fact that you are going to have this one clock cycle of delay at least. The first sample of the impulse response of the NTF will definitely be 1. Okay, so now uh, this is in time domain. Can you tell what will be the equivalent condition in frequency domain? I mean, that is here I had some condition in time domain. This was equivalent to something in the omega, do omega or z domain. So, in terms of the z, tr uh, z transform, what is this equal to? Or maybe I'll write. If I write NTF of Z, how will I find it from the impulse response? I mean, e power j omega Z. So I'll basically put Z power minus n. I mean, it is the same as Fourier transform, but this guy is replaced by Z. Now look at this guy and tell me if I were to get only the first sample, what will I do here? Sorry? Yeah. What should I put? No, in here n is some n is not a variable to you, right? The only variable available to you is z. 
what will you do to z so that i can get the first sample along so expand it what is if i expand it what do i get from n equal to 0 to infinity i mean expand the sum uh, so, plus let us say i'll say h of 1 now look at this and tell me what can i do to z i'll have to tend z to infinity right so this is basically saying my so this is one condition that we have to satisfy for practical realizability of this ntf okay the ntf evaluated at z equal to infinity or conversely the first sample of the ntf simple response has three one that will only ensure we can have uh, this to be realized in practice that clear and similarly fit where and high pass ntf this should be zero cool so now we have looked at this first order modulator in some detail let's keep extending it so now let us say i want to have a second order ntf which is this guy so this is my first order ntf let me copy this what will i change here to get a second order ntf Ah, instead of this integrator, I should have something else. So let us say this is some L of the. Is it fine? So now let's quickly find out what is the STF and NTF. I think we did it in the last class. Let's repeat it. What is STF here? Remember, STF is the transfer function from this guy to this guy. When this is not there, what is that? It's L of Z by one plus L of Z, and remember that this. What can you say about this loop filters gain at DC? What can you say about the loop filters gain at DC? No, no. The loop filter. Remember, it had. It definitely has an integrator. In a first order case, we had one integrator. So it's going to be really large at. I mean, infinite at DC. and for low frequencies it's going to be really large right so then how what will this approximate to at low frequencies it approximate to what value 1 right and remember we are looking at signal frequencies which are low so i will say within my signal bandwidth which is in band this is 1 and that makes sense we want the same input to appear at the output okay so now what is my ntf ntf is the transfer function from this guy to here when this is not there what is that yeah i mean you can work it out this is 1 by 1 plus l of z so now we have this generalized framework so for any ntf you can find what is the loop filter you should have by the way this is called loop filter and let's quickly find what is l of z in terms of ntf in terms of ntf what is l of z When I'm on NTF, I'm sorry. Is it okay? Okay. So if we were to have a second order thing, this is going to be one by one minus z inverse whole square minus one. So this will simplify to. Okay. So this will give rise to the second order modulator, which is referred to as mod two. Okay. Let's quickly see what will be the benefit in the noise we get. So again, uh, I have my NTF is whole square. I am trying to find what is my quantization noise within my signal bandwidth. How will I find it? Okay, let's start from scratch. Ideally, the quantization noise is flat, and uh, this is going to be delta square by twelve pi. I'm yeah, and my bandwidth is let us say zero to pi by m, right? Now the filtered quantization noise, how will it look like? Right. So at low frequencies, what can you say? At low frequencies, my NTF of e power j omega. Omega square, right? And remember uh, the path spectral density. I mean, to find this, I have to integrate this guy. 
0 to pi by m so delta square by 12 pi times the magnitude square of NTF. Right. So this is basically delta square by 12 pi 0 to pi by m. This is omega power 4 d omega. What is this? I like just do the integral and tell me what is this? Yeah. Yeah. That's all. Now, if you, I mean, can you quickly tell me what did we get for a first order case? Same thing. What will change for a first order case? This will be omega square. That's all, right? So, what would what what did we get in first order? Yeah, it would have been just pi cube by three m cube, right? So now you see, if we go by one order. When we had m cube, we have m power phi benefit, right? Now let can you tell me in generalized case, if I have an NTF like this, ah, uh, twelve pi. What will be the exponent? Pi pi to the power. Yeah, yeah. No, look at it carefully, right? See, if I have one minus z inverse four, huh? so this at low frequencies, how does it go as? No, first let's do it step by step. How, at low frequencies, how does it go as? Yeah, this one. This one. Yeah, yeah. Low frequencies goes as omega power n. You are taking magnitude square of it, integrating. So this is basically this. Right? So now this is nice. So if I keep increasing the order, I see that my <laughs> in-band quantization is smaller and smaller. Right? So that made us ask the question: Why don't I go crazy? and say I have a hundredth order modulator. What was the issue? Yeah, we thought th th that could be issues with stability because if you keep increasing the order, we will have more delay in the loop. But being a non-linear system, it slightly happens in a different way. Let us look at what happens. For that, let us actually look at the NTFs. Let us say I take a first order case. At low frequencies, how does it go as this guy? This goes as omega. And if I evaluate this NTF at omega equal to pi, remember omega equal to pi corresponds to what value of z? Omega equal to pi corresponds to what value of z? Z is e power j omega, right? So what is it? Minus 1. So, what is the value? If I evaluate uh, 2, I am evaluating this guy at z equal to minus 1, it is 2. This is first order. Let us say now I go to second order. What is low frequency? And this guy? 4, oh, right? So, let us quickly plot the two NTFs first. So, here I am just plotting the magnitude of NTF. This is omega from 0 to pi. The first order case at low frequencies it goes as omega, it is linear and then reaches let us say 2. The second order case it goes as omega square. So it will go like this or like this? One or two? Second right, remember uh, I, I know that it is going to suppress the noise further. So only the second one is so it will do something like this 4 now if i go for third order what happens 8 right so this basically might do something like this just draw it clearly okay so now if you see if i increase my order what happens to my in band noise huh that reduces, but what happens to the noise outside my bandwidth? So, I will just say out of band noise. And in fact, uh, this guy, I remember this is 8, right? Yeah. So, in fact, this guy, which is the NTF evaluated at z equal to minus 1, has some particular name, it is called out of band gain. Abbreviated as OBG. 
so now i see if i increase my order my in band noise reduces but my obg increases now let's see what is the impact of this and for that let me actually okay quickly redraw this modulator <coughs> loves it So this is y, this is v, this is q. Now what is v of z? Hold on, just a second. It's okay, like here. What is my v of z? I mean, it's going to be some STF times u plus NTF times q. But within the signal frequencies, what can you say about STF? Within the signal frequencies, what can you say about STF? It's approximately one we just saw, right? So STF is L by one plus L. My loop gain, loop filter will have lot of gain at low frequencies, so approximately one. So I'll basically approximate this as. Oops. I'll just say V of Z is approximately my input plus NTF times Q. I mean everything is in Z, Z domain. I am not writing that Z. Okay. Now, if that is the case, can you tell me what is Y? First of all, what is Y in terms of V? P of Z minus Q of Z. Fine. So, if I simplify it, what do I get? And you know what is V, right? U of Z plus yeah NTF minus one fine. Now remember this is the signal that is going to the quantizer actually, right? And uh, okay, right here this is Y of Z. And remember that the input to the quantizer must be within the full scale of it. It has to be within some minus V ref to plus V ref, so that the quantizer doesn't overload, right? So this has to be, let us say, I'll say mod Y in time. I mean, I'll just say mod mod Y of t must be within some full scale, okay? And here you see that the swings at the quantizer input is not just a function of the actual input. It also depends on these two guys, right? So the it also depends. It basically depends on the NTF I use and the quantization noise. Right? So now you tell me if I keep increasing the order, what happened to my out of band gain? It increased. If my out of band gain increases, what can you say about the signal swings due to this portion? It will increase because my out of band noise gain is higher. So this guy will magnify my quantization noise outside the signal bandwidth with a larger factor. So the swings due to this guy will increase. So what can you say about the input then? I can, I have to apply a smaller input. So which means the maximum input I can apply <coughs> has to correspondingly reduce. And in fact, uh, this maximum input has a particular name. So another jargon to remember called maximum stable amplitude. Abbreviated as MSA. Okay. It's called maximum stable amplitude because the moment this guy exceeds the full scale, what happens to the quantizer output? If the input to the quantizer exceeds the full scale, what happens to the quantizer output? I mean, the quantizer has some particular range. I'm asking, I'm saying, if the input to the quantizer exceeds the full scale range, what happens to the output, quantizer output, till the saturate, right? So if you have a case like this, basically the output will basically do this and saturate. Your input might be nicely varying like this, but the actual output will saturate. Okay. And that's how instability happens here. Basically this signal will keep growing beyond bounds. But if you just look at this, it will just get saturated. Cool. So now you tell me if I keep increasing the order crazily, let's say I go for 100th order modulator, what can happen? Oh. Let's say I keep increasing the order continuously, 
what can happen i mean but can you give a more uh, better argument i mean till saturate yeah but i know i can this is, i also have the input right zero ha huh. so i mean basically see if you keep increasing the order what can happen is that even without you applying the input this guy can exceed the full scale range which means your adc is unusable okay so that's what restricts our order and usually in practice we keep the order to be less than 4 less than equal to 4 for this reason and even in this case see for a fourth order modulator or fourth order ntf what is my out of band gain i mean normally what huh 16 right but uh, we don't usually use this maximum obg we try to keep it to again less than or equal to 3 usually now the question is how do we reduce the out of band gain we'll come to that next but before that uh, one other observation i wish to make so here the this guy the second term is the problematic term now here you see we also have this quantization noise now let us say i use a single bit modulator that is i use a single bit quantizer for a single bit quantizer what can you say about the quantization noise compared to using a multi bit quantizer i mean let us say i have a 3 bit quantizer versus 1 bit quantizer can you say anything about the quantization noise between the two cases it will be like 1 bit quantizer will have the maximum quantization noise yeah. right so if you use a single bit uh, quantizer this guy might itself be so large that even for relatively smaller orders let us say even for a second order case this can actually go beyond okay so usually for a single bit modulator we try to keep the obg to be less than 1.5 so this is called least rule it's just an empirical rule it's not like you know like hard and fast rule okay it doesn't mean that if i use an obg of 1.51 it will become unstable just an empirical number so now we just need to figure out how we are going to reduce my obg right because now all i know is i have an ntf which is of the order of the form 1 minus z inverse power n this has an out of band gain of 2 power n but i'm saying i cannot use this i have to reduce the obg so let's see how we'll do that and again we'll take a simple example i'll take a third order case no it is, operation i mean your input bandwidth is small that is uh-huh. right but your quantization noise is present in the entire range right see the out of band gain is creating issues because remember your quantization noise is present in this entire thing this is getting multiplied by your noise transfer function maybe write it here this is your quantization noise spectrum which is white this is getting multiplied by your transfer functions here so if your out of band gain is higher noise at these frequencies will be magnified so that will correspond to larger and larger swings in the time domain right so for understanding how we'll reduce the out of band gain let's take this right so here what is the out of band gain obg which is right so now let us say i try to reduce the obg to say 1.5 so that i can use with a single bit quantizer so let's see how we can do so here i am plotting this uh, this guy so once again what will be at low frequency how will it go as 1 minus z inverse whole cube at low frequency how will it go as omega cube so what will be the slope 60 db per decade that you can see is very fair from this plot and uh, my out of band gain is what what is the obg i mean you just mentioned that what is obg a so i mean in log scale how much is 20 log 8 20 log 2 is what No, it's not minus. Twenty log two is what? 
no no it's not minus right it's just plus 6 so how much is this 20 log 2 is 6 so what is 20 log 8 18 db it's 2 power 3 so around your outer band gain is around 18 db here okay now my goal is to reduce this guy to 1.5 right 20 log 1.5 that's what i want to do so now tell me i want to reduce the out of band gain from 8 to 1.5 but uh, what do i want the low frequency behavior to be do, do i wish to change the low frequency behavior or no i don't want to change the low frequency behavior i still want this to go as omega q because that's that's what gave us the third order noise shaping okay so now tell me what can be done so i have an ntf as such that is not great because it has large obg i need to do something to the ntf so that the low frequency content is intact the high frequency content is reduced i mean just what can what should i do i have this transfer function ntf of z right i need to do something to this transfer function yeah pass through a low pass filter so i mean basically that means you directly multiply this with some h of z but straight away doing that is problematic because this will increase the order again right so instead what we do is this we do it indirectly so my ntf of z is 1 minus z inverse whole cube ideally i'll write it like this z minus 1 whole cube by z cube at low frequencies what is the behavior it's omega q and if i were to find the out of band gain that is basically ntf evaluated at z equal to minus 1 which is minus 1 minus 1 whole cube by minus 1 cube which is 8 so here where are the zeros of this guy located at i mean zeros of this transfer function where are they Z equal to 1? Is that okay? And where are the poles? Now tell me, I want this guy to be going as omega q, right? Now this behavior of omega q is being done by these zeros or the poles? Why poles? I mean, what I'm saying is, I have zeros and poles. A transfer function is basically defined by its poles and zeros. Now, I want my transfer function at low frequencies to go as omega q. The question is, this is being uh, guaranteed by the zeros or the poles here. Why poles? <laughs> see, at low, see, what I'm saying, it should go as omega q, right? Which means at DC, what should the value be? At omega equal to 0, which is DC, I want this to be at 0. Now, I want a transfer function to go to 0 at some frequency. The zeros is what is giving this. Remember that this is because Z minus 1, that is what is giving us, right? Is that clear? Cool. Now, you look at this out of band gain. This out of band gain is contributed by both pole and 0, right? So now I want to, I mean, if I want to change the transfer function, I can only play around with these guys. I don't want this guy to change. So which means I can't touch the zero. So what can I touch? Poles, right? So here I have basically kept all the poles at z equal to zero. So this guy is not doing anything in the out of band game. This guy is like useless guy, right? So instead of keeping all the poles at z equal to zero, I'll try to spread them apart. So I'll form a new NTF which will look like this z minus 1 whole q let's say z minus p1 right and i'll basically write it like this it's ntf of z that is the original ntf of z times one denominator polynomial this is the i mean i can basically divide this entire thing by z cube here z cube here right and then do this. So now again, it's what we are doing is the same thing. We are having a low pass filter which is of this form. Just that we have not increased the order, right? So this will be a low pass filter. So if I look at its uh, thing, 
So it basically look like this. Constant and at high frequencies. And if I do that, the transfer function finally looks like this. So this is the original thing, 1 minus the inverse whole cube. And this is the new transfer function. I mean, I, I don't expect anyone to know how to find the transfer functions. Even in practice, no one finds it manually. There is an excellent toolbox available in MATLAB designed by Richard Schreier from analog devices. So you can just plug and play. Just enter what is the NTF order, what is the OBG one, it calculates and gives you. right? So the goal of this course is not to sit and make you calculate this transfer function. And But as a designer, you should know what is happening there. right? So, so here if you see, as expected, the OBG has dropped down, great. But something has something else changed? Yes. What changed? Slope yeah, I mean, the what can you say about the slope here? Same. Slope is same, right? So here it goes as omega q. So how is it going as here? <laughs> but if, if it goes as omega cube, it should match this, right? No, it's not omega minus something. It is basically some scaling factor in omega. Cube. Now, if you take log of this, as for omega cube, you take log of this. We have 20 log alpha plus that same thing. So it just shifted up, right? And let's quickly find out what that alpha is, right? So earlier we had NTF of z, which was 1 minus z inverse whole cube. At low frequencies, this went as omega cube. So now I have 1 minus the inverse whole cube by a denominator polynomial. This goes as, it's not equal to, I'll just say this goes as alpha omega cube. What is alpha? How can I find alpha? Remember that this omega cube is coming from this guy. So what is giving rise to this alpha? Denominator, right? And remember that uh, when we even came up with this thing, yeah. So this is going to be the frequency response of kind of a low pass filter, right? So how will I find? I mean, and remember that this. If I plot it here itself, or maybe not. Okay. Uh, let me check. Go back here. Yeah. So uh, I am going to have omega cube at low frequencies due to this times something due to this additional guy. And how can I find what is the scaling factor? Yeah, it, the gain is same basically throughout this guy. I can find the value of this transfer function at any point. Simplest thing is to put omega equal to 0. Right? Because as you can see here, between these two there is a constant thing for a wide range of frequencies till this point. Right? So that uh, extra transfer function is giving a flat response for a whole range of frequencies. I will simply evaluate it at z equal to 1. So alpha is simply 1 by that is how you will do it. And in fact, this trend that see if I increase the out of if I decrease the strength in the out of band gain, my strength in the in band increases, right? And in fact, this is a fundamental thing. It can be shown that for stable LTA systems, I mean, I don't know, have you heard sensitivity sensitivity functions in control theory? No? Okay, fine. So it turns out if you increase the uh, if you basically reduce this guy. This will increase and vice versa. That is something you cannot avoid. Okay. So, huh? Right? Yeah, trade off. It's fundamental for stable transfer functions. This is the deal. If you increase the area above the 0 dB line, the area below the 0 dB line increases and vice versa. Okay. So, here I have gotten uh, OBG has reduced, but my in band performance has become alpha times omega cube, where alpha is greater than 1 or less than 1? No, no. See earlier I had this, but now at the same frequency I have something higher. It, has to be greater. it is greater than one. So do you think uh, we have got a? I mean, this has become a better high pass filter or a worse high pass filter? Not good. It has actually worsened slightly, right? So my in band noise is no longer going as omega cube; it goes as alpha omega cube, where this is greater than one. So our 
quantization noise within the signal band yeah will slightly worsen right earlier yeah see earlier we had delta square by 12 pi times for third order what was the thing yeah but if i do it what is the final thing i get pi by m yeah omega cube if i take the magnitude squared of this to find the pass spectral density and i'll have to integrate it so i have pi power 7 by but now in addition to it i'll have this alpha square okay because my ntf is no longer going as omega cube it goes as alpha omega cube okay so this in band uh, noise power is higher right so now that makes you understand this if i increase the order what happens to my obg normally increases and as we saw this reduces my msa the maximum stable amplitude right now to counter this if you go ahead and reduce the obg what happens to my sqnr no no sqnr decreases sqnr decreases because my noise power is slightly higher so there is always some trade off okay but usually find that this reduction is usually okay good so one other thing about ntf so remember uh, till now for the third order ntf we have been looking at a case like this right the cube of course we have denominator let's ignore that for now right so here where are the zeros at all the zeros are at z equal to 1 and if i sketch the transfer function so the or the magnitude of the frequency response of the ntf something like this this is my pi by m right i am interested to find how much noise i have accumulated within this range of frequencies now if i take the area of this curve do you think i have maximum contribution from low frequencies or around the band edge around the band edge so that made people think well if maximum contribution is coming from here why do we place all the zeros at omega equal to 0 right i can actually put 10 somewhere here so that i'll have something like this right so that way i'll basically reduce the maximum thing here okay and in fact uh, this will give us benefit so in this case earlier we had all the zeros at z equal to 1 or omega equal to 0 now what we are saying is i'll have only one zero at z equal to 1 that is omega equal to 0 i'll have another thing at omega equal to some omega z so what will be the value of z e power j omega z that's all now if i have one root at e power plus j omega z for real polynomials that's all you we'll have one more omega z and if i do this how will the ntf change uh, or the ntf go at low frequencies can you tell me uh, or let's write it first let's say i'll write the ntf directly ntf of z right oh, what is it i have 1 0 at z equal to 1 1 here 1 here so what is it i'll have d of z let's forget about that what is the numerator 1 minus z inverse 1 minus z inverse that's fine and one more at that's all so now tell me how will this go as in uh, at low frequencies again z to c power j omega you approximate t power j omega is 1 plus j omega so what do you get first term omega. yeah i mean <laughs> omega let's take the magnitude alone this omega what about the second term z is e power j omega so this c power minus j omega into e power j omega z that fine minus j omega. So remember this e power minus j omega times e power j omega z e power i'll say j into omega omega z and the third term will be omega, 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 
and we have 1 by d of the inverse that gives some alpha constant. So now this is your NTF, you can find this is your NTF to find the inbound noise power you do the same thing delta square by 12 pi times this entire thing integrate from 0 to pi by m and you can actually uh, find where this integral reaches a minimal value and you can find what is the optimal value of this omega z. Right? You can uh, you know this is the inbound noise power you want this to be a minimum you find what value of omega z gives minimum of this function and that way you can find omega z. But uh, that you can uh, work out I will give it as an exercise. But uh, one thing to observe is see here I have let us say this as omega z. If I change my oversampling ratio, so let us say I choose this to be my new signal bandwidth. Do you think the location of this 0 will change? No. See earlier let us say I had something like this, let us say this is my signal bandwidth. To minimize the noise power here I put one zero here let us say. Now let us say I have another case wherein I have wider signal bandwidth same thing. You have to specifically change the zero, zero location right. By itself, I mean this is the transfer function that we are making so the zero can will now somewhere be here right. So the optimal zero that you find will be a function of the oversampling ratio that I will give it as an assignment you can find and if you do this you will actually easily get 8 dB improvement in noise power. Okay. And here I am showing that optimal 0. So this is the thing with optimized zeros. Okay. And as you can see here f by m I think the same thing uh, I forgot I think somewhere here maybe I, I do not remember somewhere here. Yeah, see simply because I am let us say trying to find noise power till here right. Yeah. So here I have increased this guy but remember this guy is already at minus 120 your maximum contribution will be coming from here. If I look at the white curve alone in the white curve you see that the maximum contribution will be coming here because it is minus 40 minus 60 right whereas when I do the blue thingy I basically reduce this guy heavily. Now although this guy here has increased that is still okay right because the maximum contribution is going to come from here minus 40 minus 60. So instead of minus 100 if it is minus 80 it is okay right because you are looking at 10 power minus 4 versus 10 power minus 8 and 10 power minus 10. So that is why reducing here will actually give you significant benefit and that number is 8 dB for a third order case. Okay. Cool. To conclude today's discussion. So remember that if you keep increasing the order of the modulator the issue is that the input to the quantizer can grow beyond the bounds and the actual input to the quantizer is a function of the input you have, the NTF you use and the quantization noise you have right. And we also saw for a particular NTF <coughs> normally just specifying the order is enough. But if you just specify the order the out of band gain is fixed to 2 power n but we do not want that so you have to specify the out of band gain also and remember that the out of band gain will also depend on how much quantization noise that you are adding that is as we saw if you have a single bit case the OBG had to be less than or equal to 1.5 so you also have to specify what is the I will say number of levels in the quantizer. In addition you have this option of changing the zero location that is called optimize zeros and as we saw the location of this optimal zero is a function of the oversampling ratio. Okay. So these are the things that one needs to know while making an NTF. So these two are okay and let us understand the trade offs in these two in these three. So let us say I designed a particular NTF with some order some OBG and some number of levels. Okay. So let us say I increase the order but when I increase the order I keep these two guys to be same right. I am interested finally in the signal to quantization noise ratio. So first let us find out what happens to the quantization noise in band. What happens? Yeah 
but okay so let's say in general for nth order it's delta square by 12 pi times something like this but remember out of band gain is not maximum so we'll have some alpha square here okay so if i increase the order can clearly see that the noise power reduces but one thing to notice i'm keeping the same obg so do you think the alpha will change see that is earlier let's say i had a third order modulator this is the usual stuff where the obg is 8 and let us say fix the obg to 1.5 so to bring <coughs> the obg from 8 to 1.5 let us say i had some alpha so now let us say increase the order to 4 right obg 16 but i am keeping the same obg of 1.5 the alpha will be higher because that area you are decreasing yeah is it clear so since i am reducing the obg by a lot of amount the in band increase will also be higher so this alpha will slightly increase but eventually will be dominated by decrease due to this guy So, if you have a large oversampling ratio, this guy will dominate the increase in this. So, overall, you will still have reduction in this guy. So, this guy reduces. Now, what about the maximum stable amplitude? So, increase the order. I keep the out of band gain to be same. Can you say about the maximum stable amplitude? Will it change or will it increase? now remember my see it my msa is coming from this guy right yeah i want this guy to be within the limits so i have look at the second term so i am saying i am not changing the number of levels in the quantizer so will this guy change no no now i am keeping the out of band gain same so do you think so this will also roughly not change a lot so your msa will also be roughly the same because i am having the same out of band gain so overall i'll have an improvement in sqna and when you increase the order this increase can be significant because this goes as 1 by m power something right let's say we'll do the other thing let's say i increase the out of band gain and when i increase the out of band gain i am keeping the order same number of levels to be same let's do the same thing what happens to the in band noise power yes why i am increasing the out of band gain if i increase the out of band noise in band reduces so this will actually reduce and what can you say about the maximum stable amplitude that will decrease right so now you see my noise power reduces but the maximum signal power that also reduces right so if you take the ratio now it all depends on you know which is dominated by what right and also i mean you can't go crazy and increase the obg to a lot of amount then your msa will be even zero right so this actually depends on case by case basis if you have a small increase in the obg you will have a benefit msa will not change a lot but this guy will reduce so for small increase in obg it is okay so the last thing we'll do if i let us say increase the number of levels let us let us say initially i had i don't know uh, an n bit quantizer now i am using an n plus 1 bit quantizer what happened how, how, how much will it decrease by can you say yeah if i in increase the number of i mean if i increase the resolution by 1 bit what can you say about the step size delta you have a step how is step size calculated 2 power n right So, if I increase the resolution by one bit, what happens to the step step size? Halves. If step size halves, from here tell me what happens to the noise power? One fourth. So, if uh, noise becomes one fourth, how many decibels I am getting? Ten log of four, right? How much is that? I mean, four four x reduction. Ten log four is. 6 dB. Okay, so this guy reduces by 6 dB. Now, I mean, let's uh, look at the maximum stable amplitude also. What happens to my MSA? I increase the 
number of bits in the quantizer. So look at this equation and tell me what will happen to the MSA. Yeah, why? So remember if I change the, if I increase the resolution, the actual quantization noise will reduce. So which means I can actually have slightly higher MSA. So MSA will also slightly increase. So overall you will have a better, okay, cool, let's stop.